Welcome back to the Prada Museum in Madrid, Spain, for another of our weekly sessions in English. This is a project that's made possible by the nonprofit organization, the American Friends of the Prada Museum. And you can go to our website to find about all the projects that we work on and how you might be able to get involved as well. And if you prefer to speak Spanish, then you can go to the website of the Fundación de Amigos. Today we'll be talking about Goya's painting, The Witch's Flight, which is one of his paintings on the subject of witchcraft and maybe one of the most sinister, most unsettling, but also incredibly beautiful and eloquent. It's given rise to numerous interpretations and we're going to see a few of them today. But I think if we can take any one clear idea away from this painting today, it is how Goya at the end of the 18th century really is a modern artist. So this oil painting is, is relatively small in size. Um, it's one of six canvases that Goya painted for the Duke of Osuna to decorate his country house. And in it, we can see three flying bare-chested figures, these witches, uh, wearing these tall hats. And these hats that kind of look like mitres. They kind of look like this kind of hat that, that a Catholic bishop might wear. But they're decorated with what looks like snakes that, that may refer to Satan. And the three of them are holding up a naked man in midair and they're doing something to him, but what exactly they're doing is hard to say. Are they sucking his blood? Maybe. But if we look closely, we can see that it looks like their cheeks are filled with air. It looks like they're blowing into him. And that would make this more of a scene of demonic possession. It looks like the man is writhing, flailing, maybe in fear and pain, trying to break free or or maybe having some kind of involuntary reaction to whatever is being done to him. There is a bright light that illuminates the scene, but we can still tell from the background that this is taking place at night. And below we have two countrymen. It seems like they have just arrived to this place. They're, they have a donkey that's accompanying them, and so maybe they've been walking along this path, and, uh, and then they've come across this scene. One is lying on the ground, and we can see that he's covering his ears, looking down. And the other one is walking underneath with this white sheet over his head, trying at all costs to avoid seeing and hearing what is happening above them. And actually, in the infrared image of this painting, this figure, was originally intended to look the other direction, which would have been an interesting change in composition. And we see that he's holding his hands out in this, in this strange, very specific gesture. He's placing his thumbs in between his index and his middle fingers. This gesture is called a manufica, or the fig sign, and it was supposed to ward off evil spirits. So these two are really trying to do everything they can not to see, not to hear, to protect themselves from what is taking place right above their heads. And the donkey is actually a common inclusion in Goya's paintings to represent ignorance. And so here begin the variety of interpretations of this painting. Maybe these two men were walking down this path through the night and they came across the scene of a demonic possession. Other people have pointed out that really nobody's actually witnessing what is taking place here. So maybe these two are walking through the night and they are imagining the different monsters that might be lurking in the shadows. Both of these ideas would have been completely ridiculed in the Enlightenment when an educated upper class valued reason over superstition and magic. Other interpretations focus on the hats. Goya might be identifying these beings with clergymen, filling people up with ideas that would have been in contradiction with the rationalism of the Enlightenment. Now, around the same time, Goya was working on his Caprichos series of engravings that would be published the following year. And a lot of these also touch on the subject of witchcraft and superstition. So Goya used the subject of witchcraft to criticize, the, to criticize ignorance and the dangers of ignorance that come from a lack of education. 
He actually wrote to his friend in a letter saying that, uh, I don't fear witches, I don't fear ghosts, I don't fear spirits. The only class of bodies that I do fear are humans. And this might seem like a strange subject for someone to decorate their house with in the 18th century, but it wasn't quite as uncommon as you might imagine. In the first place, because the Duke and Duchess of Osuna were some of the most important enlightened nobles of the time, and so they would have understood this criticism of superstition. Um, and also because this type of subject did appear in other European countries, but with different context. We can think of artists like Johann Heinrich Fussli in Switzerland, or Caspar David Friedrich in Germany, or William Blake in England. But while those artists were questioning the rationalism, the validity of the values of the Enlightenment with fantasy and with the grotesque, Goya is using these same subjects of witchcraft, of fantasy and magic to defend the values of the Enlightenment, to defend reason and criticize ignorance and all of the dangers that it leads to. And so with Goya here, we really see when artists begin to step out of their courtesan roles and play a different role in society, one where they are free to observe and to criticize and to challenge society. The artist is no longer someone that just represents the things that he sees around him in the world, but that questions the things that he sees in the world and questions the order of things. So really through and through a modern artist. And with that, we'll end our weekly session in English for today. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you again next Wednesday for more sessions in English.